issues, and I'm sure that we will have a first echo on some of the real issues you mentioned with Bertrand, who has been in the World Bank and is in the private sector. Yes, so with some people around the table, I could also share some horror stories as uh, Masoud uh, tried to incentivize me to go, uh, but I will try to resist that temptation. Uh, let me, let me start with uh, celebrating a good memory. 200 years ago, in 2015, uh, the entire world agreed on a new roadmap for our economy. We called it Sustainable Development. We added the uh, Paris Accord in December, and previously to that, we had the Partnership for Development signed in Addis. So in 2015, we agreed that our economy should be more resilient, more inclusive, and more sustainable. And everybody agreed. Everybody signed. All our governments are part of this uh, roadmap. Uh, I remember at that time, one of the questions I raised was, it's great to agree on objectives, how do we pay for this? How much does it cost and who is going to foot the bill? Uh, and, and one of my contribution was uh, the report from billions to trillions. Uh, here we are, eight years later, we are uh, both totally off track and at a turning point. The number of billions available is, let, let me be optimistic, still the same. And the number of trillions needed has grown, precisely because we are off track. On top of that, I mean, we've discussed that uh, yesterday and, and, and this morning, uh, we are facing uh, centrifugal forces wherever we look. Uh, you call it polycrisis, permacrisis, you have the geopolitical issues, economic tensions, the financial change of paradigm, the raise of interest rates, inflation, social, AI, etc., which basically move a number of people to look inward and not outward. And I think it is a, a very important issue. People are less and less interested by the rest of the world. And to a certain extent, I have sympathy for that approach. Uh, and so you see the results in a number of uh, big gatherings, be it the G20, be it the BRICS, being the, the, the discussion around the loss and damage. So last year we celebrated as a success the creation of a loss and damage fund. And uh, la last week or two weeks ago, people say, well, it's going to be difficult and to, we don't want the World Bank to be in charge because the World Bank is American. <laughs> so that's, that's a reality. I mean, we are facing a, a global gap. So people now are playing the global south against the global north or the global west. And uh, the, tensions, uh, the tensions abound. I, I was sharing with Jean-Michel over lunch a, a, quote, a quote from Marguerite Ursena. Some of you might know her. She was a Belgian writer, actually. She lived and died in the US. And she wrote a book called The Memoirs of Adrian. So she put herself in the shoes of, uh, of the Emperor Adrian. Uh, aging in his villa north of Rome and reflecting on Rome and the fall of Rome. And he say, uh, I know that the fall of Rome will arrive. How can I delay that moment where the barbarians outside and the slaves inside will rush onto a world which we ask them uh, to uh, respect from far or to serve from below? And then he adds, but I would like them to love Rome. And I think, I mean, it does some echo with the situation we are facing today. Uh, and so we are, we are facing this tension, uh, and it has, uh, it, it has I mean, impact on what uh, Masoud described. So we are facing challenges. The roadmap we agreed in 2015 requires trillions. I mean, it looks a little bit surreal to add trillions to trillions. And we have to find these trillions in a world where market conditions have changed. And I think a number of the speakers will discuss these market conditions. They are not helpful. Where the policy mix is changing as well, uh, fiscal stress. The role of monetary policy has changed. Uh, and, and when the governance, the, the global governance is more and more fragmented. So in a nutshell, private flows are diminishing. They are minuscule and they are diminishing. It's less than 4% of European AUM which goes to emerging market, less than 2% of American AUM. So it's very small. It's diminishing for a number of very rational reasons, interest rates. When you're a small mutual insurance company, why would you want to take a risk in RDC or in Morocco if you can get 5% on US Treasury? It's very straightforward. Second, industrial policy. The Green Deal and IRA, they require to mobilize local savings. So here again, I think the French government example, put money in the French tech, put money in this, put money in this. So there's no money left for the rest of the world. Everybody is doing the same. And on top of that, as I said, the inward looking perspective of a number of clients. I mean, I've heard pension funds and people telling me my clients don't want their money to be used elsewhere. We have enough problem at home. Why would you move my money to help these people? Whereas in my country, we have also suburban issues. We have also transition issues, etc. So private money is under stress. And on top of that, of course, Basel II, solvency, Basel II and Solvency II and the rest don't help or provide good excuse not to do anything. Public flows are under stress. In real terms, the flows to Africa have diminished. 
And there are a number of reasons for that. I mean, fiscal stress, but also Ukraine, refugees and, and the likes. So money is not going there. Uh, and you have the tension that, that Masoud uh, highlighted. Uh, on the one hand, development, on the other, climate, uh, with the same pot of money. So you're adding a number of priorities with the same pot of money. So all this was solved in Paris with the, with the, the summit on the Global Financing Pact. If you remember, there was a joint op-ed by Biden, Macron, Sunak, Ramaphosa, 13 or 15 head of state, which basically says it all, a green transition that leaves no one behind. Hallelujah. So that's exactly uh, what we should aim at. But the reality is far beyond the headline. How do we get there? And on top of that, we are adding to the equation uh, norms and standards. I mean, let me call it ESG. I'm a, I'm a fan of this, but the reality is that we're imposing this on the rest of the world. I wouldn't want Europe to become Boboland. You know, that to impose on the rest of the world a number of very nice expectations which don't fit the capacity of a number of countries. So let me conclude with that. I think we really have to, to, to really shift uh, the needle. We have to, first of all, recognize the issue, and that was a benefit of the Paris summit. It put the, the, the issue on the table. There is a divide between the South and the North. There are real reasons for this divide. There are financing problems. We have a lack of money, and we have a multiplication of objectives, and we have very few places where we can do this properly, including, as Masoud said, within the MDB international system, which is less and less fit for purpose, very unfortunately. Uh, so it's very difficult to, to follow. And, say, and, and that's because the, the issue will be handled if we are able to, to join forces. And of course, it's easier said than done. Join forces meaning that the countries, the receiving countries, should do something that the MDB and DFI should also change the way they handle things, that we address a number of the normative issues, which of course in, in, a, in a universe where risk is the name of the game, people are less tempted to do. So good luck to the people who want to change Basel II or Solvency II in today's world. Uh, and we have to mobilize investors. So it seems that it's quite difficult. And, and the big issue, and I conclude with that, Masoud said, uh, well, I said, and we said that we need to increase the money in the system, that was a billions to trillions equation. I think it's still valid. We need to put more money. But maybe more importantly, we need to add a new chapter, which will be from trillions to millions. Even if hypothetically we got the trillions, I don't think we would be able to, 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 to use this money. And no, I'm very serious about this. And you see that with the EU, with the EU plan. I mean, we are supposed to, to have 800 billion. I mean, the big chunk of this million cannot be spent. So that's, that's the issue today. I, I think we are facing a, a fantastic, uh, I mean, dramatic and fantastic situation. And we really have to revise our operating system fast. If not, we'll gather next year and it's going to be even more problematic. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Bertrand. Uh, I don't want uh, you to react. Uh, uh, I was looking for uh, your criticism of the promises that were simple promises uh, with figures, and we are not at all respected, the 100 billion. But for instance, yes. For instance. Huh, that, there are many other It is a catastrophe. That's one of the many promises. Everywhere I go, they don't speak of trillions. They say, no, you said you would ship 100 billion, and we, we saw nothing.